How must the ventilation system in a battery room be configured? This is Claire. Claire is responsible for the technical building equipment in her company. Since a new battery system has to be installed in the coming days, she wonders how a ventilation system in a battery room must be configured. Claire questions herself about who can help her and contacts the manufacturer of the energy storage system. She talks to Peter. Peter is a service technician at Hoppeke and can exactly explain to Claire what has to be considered when configuring a ventilation system. The requirements for the ventilation in a battery room can be found in the international standard IEC 624852. During the normal use of a stationary battery system, gas is produced. A hydrogen-oxygen mixture is formed. To prevent this gas from igniting and causing an explosion, the room must be adequately ventilated. There is the possibility of both natural ventilation and a controlled technical ventilation system. It is important that there is an adequate exchange of air to remove the gas that is produced. The openings for the incoming and outgoing air must be placed in a suitable location. They should be located on the opposite wall in each case. If this is not possible and the openings are on the same wall, there must be a distance of at least 2 meters. The air should enter close to the floor and exit via the cells as high as possible on the opposite side. The size of the ventilation openings in natural ventilation depends on the required air exchange rate, which varies depending on the battery. Technical forced ventilation is configured and installed as required. Because there are so many points to consider, Claire will now have the battery room inspection performed by Hoppeke Service. Good to know for healthy batteries. Just do it like Claire and let Hoppeke Service advise you how to accommodate your stationary battery system. Or simply have Hoppeke perform your battery room assessment.